Listen to the offensive remarks about black students that got Georgetown law professor Sandra Sellers fired. And you know what? I hate to say this. I end up having this, you know, angst every semester that a lot of my lower ones are blacks. Happens almost every semester. The video call was between Sellers, who has taught at the school for nearly 20 years, and Professor David Batson, another Georgetown law professor. Part of the recording was posted online. In the clip, Sellers claims her black students routinely grade lower than her other students. And it's like, oh, come on. <laughs> you know, get some really good ones, but there are also usually some that are just plain at the bottom. It drives me crazy. Georgetown terminated Sellers and placed Batson on administrative leave while the school's Office of Diversity, Equity, and Affirmative Action investigates. saying. So let me say this. Um, so let me give you a little background about myself. I am a licensed attorney. I, have, I happen to be African-American. I've been licensed for the last 10 years. And in regards to this Professor Karen, Sharon, whatever the bitch's name is, Sandra, um, she's an adjunct professor, so she's not even a full-time faculty member. She's not on the tenure track. She's been an adjunct professor, so that means she may teach one or two classes a semester. And mediation is not even a course that is required to graduate from law school. It's an elective. Um, and the fact that she thinks that black students can't do well in mediation, uh, I opened up one of my old transcripts. I took mediation. I don't know if y'all can see that, but I got an A in mediation because guess what? The shit wasn't that hard and it wouldn't be that hard if it wasn't taught by a racist fucking white bitch. So let me just take a, take a step back. I was the first person in my family to go to law school and that is not uncommon for many um, black law students. Um, and what that meant is what is that I had to figure out everything on my own. Whereas my white classmates had parents, um, siblings, uncles, aunts, um, relatives that went to law school so they could give them the scoop and tell them what to expect. Most black students don't have that. And I participated in every kind of bridge program that I could um, from the Council Legal Education Opportunity, CLIO, that's based in DC, um, to, the own, to, our, to my law school's own um, bridge program um, that lasted about two weeks before the semester. So I did everything I could to prepare, but honestly, nothing can prepare you for law school, especially if you don't have um, firsthand knowledge or a relative that went. So based on that, um, my second year, um, I became president of the Black Law Student Association, and I even matched every first year law student with a second year um, Black law student. Um, and honestly, I think there were only 10 in my class. Um, so most classes that I had um, in law school, I was the only black person or maybe one of two or three. So I made sure every incoming first year law student had a mentor um, that was a second or third year. I also did a presentation um, for them at the first meeting of the Black Law Student Association, which is BALSA, um, which I called the 1L Academic Workshop. And so I did this because these were a lot of the questions I had about time management and briefing cases and making a schedule, taking notes in class, um, things of that nature. Because again, this is not something that um, most black people know about um, unless we have a relative that went to law school. But back to this bitch. So Georgetown is a top tier law school. I think it's number 14 um, in the top law schools. So in order to get admitted to Georgetown, even if you're black, you still need a pretty high LSAT score and you still need a pretty high GPA. I'll give you a prime example. I graduated from the University of Illinois at Chicago with a 3.9 GPA. I was Phi Beta Kappa. I had departmental distinction in psychology and I was in the honors college. Now, I applied to the University of Chicago. I got denied because my LSAT score wasn't high enough. I don't recall what it was, but it wasn't high enough for the University of Chicago where um, President Obama um, taught. Um, I also applied to the University of Illinois, which is like, my sister school in uh, Champaign-Urbana, they waitlisted me. So even though I graduated from a sister institution with a 3.9, because my LSAT score wasn't high enough, I was not admitted. Um, I was admitted to John Paul DePaul and um, John John Marshall DePaul and uh, Chicago Kent. And Chicago Kent is um, ultimately where I went because they gave me a full scholarship. But I say all that to say, you're not dealing with um, stupid black kids. You're not dealing with dumb black students. You're dealing with the top of the top. You're dealing with um, black students that went to places like Duke and Brown and Cornell. Like you're dealing with black students that went to Ivy League schools. 
um, because if they had not attended Ivy League schools, they would not have had the credentials to get into Georgetown, number one. So, and number two, mediation, like, so I looked this lady up on LinkedIn. She's like, so she's a mediator. Um, I don't know if you've ever read your, you know, any contracts that you signed um, for like a business deal. Hopefully you did, but most of them have um, an arbitration agreement because guess what? Arbitration is binding. Mediation is not. Um, so you can have a um, licensed mediator mediate between two parties in a dispute, but at the end of the day, the parties can still do whatever the hell they want to do because mediation isn't binding, but binding, but arbitration is, and it's typically cheaper than an actual um, full on jury trial. But this ignorant bitch, I'm glad she got fired. Um, but, you know, knowing our society, she'll probably get rehired somewhere else. Um, she's not going to get canceled. They're, she'll still have her mediation service. So the only thing she won't be getting is her tiny check from being an adjunct professor at Georgetown. And um, she actually attended Georgetown. So that's probably the only reason they allowed her to be an adjunct professor, but they never offered her a tenure track. Because again, mediation is not a required subject. It's an elective. So the people in that class don't even have to be there. So the fact that she's disrespecting the students that way says a lot about her. And the fact that that guy was agreed, uh, agreeing, Batson, whatever, um, which is interesting because there's a case called Batson v. Kentucky, and that's about peremptory challenges, um, a Supreme Court case um, about striking jurors for you know various reasons, race, gender, um, things of that nature. But anyway, he got, I think he's been suspended because he was like agreeing with the bitch. And I'm just like, these are the people that are shaping our legal minds. And people wonder um, why black people distrust the legal system because of shit like this, because of ignorant professors propagating um, uh, like information that is wrong because these students are, top, are the top of the crop. They wouldn't have gotten into Georgetown if they weren't. But because she's prejudiced and racist, she's projecting her own bias on these students because guess what i'm sure some white students at the bottom too but she's not talking about them so fuck this lady i'm glad she got fired and you know shout out to all my black attorney friends um i do know a couple that went to georgetown and they are some of the most brilliant people that i know so fuck this lady and i'm glad she got fired and i'm glad the balsa the black law student association took immediate action and i'm glad this got leaked um and i hope more of these um conversations get leaked so we can eliminate these racist, biased, prejudiced professors from law schools at every level.